the opposite of, of Hornets Spurs is Celtics Nuggets. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay the five and a half with the Boston Celtics. So they are 4-0 the last four seasons at home versus the Nuggets. Um, it's a really good matchup for the Celtics in Boston. I think it's a really good matchup. The the Nuggets this season are 11 and 10 on the road. It's a good mark, right? That's a good like that's a good mark. If you're above 500 on the road, you're you're pretty good. One of those was the Clippers game where they beat them without Nikola Jokic, and like there's some randoms in there as well. The overall performance over the last two seasons with what I would describe as this Nuggets core, it's KCP plus the the big four, it's not good on the road. Like this is not a good road team. They're a great home team, not a great road team. That's not to say that they are a bad road team. They're just not a great one relative to how good the Nuggets are typically. Boss, on the other hand, obviously, with the undefeated streak on the line, is awesome at home. You know, like, they're they're just absolutely incredible. So I've got this power rated at eight, uh, and that seems right to me. And that may seem very high for the defending champs. You just got to keep in mind that the regular season Nuggets are not the same as the playoff Nuggets. Like, they're just not the same. Versus, like, the regular season Celtics and the playoff Celtics, to be honest, kind of the same deal. Like that, my power rating will not go. I will not manually adjust the, the Celtics up for a power rating in the playoffs. I will absolutely do so for game one of the playoffs for the Nuggets. Um, they do have Chris Dapps, Porzingis to put on Joker. Joker's going to get his. He's Joker, right? The more important thing is that they have Derek White and Drew Holiday to put on Jamal Murray. And so you're going to be able to limit that two man game. And if you're able to limit that two man game, they can get a little out of sorts offensively, and that really helps Boston out. I have a lean to the under in this game uh, based off of like what my model projects here. I projected uh, within range of, of playing an under. I'm going to stay away because I don't like having two bets on the same game. Because uh, if, if your cap, if like the model is incorrect in its estimation, you're just you're screwed. And it may be a case of yeah. Boston just bombs because the, the big problem is that the Nuggets defense on the road is significantly worse. I don't think the Nuggets are going to be able to get stops on the road. I don't think that the Nuggets are going to be able to score efficiently enough. Boston's an excellent home court team. The Nuggets are coming off of that frustrating loss to the Sixers. They are still on the road versus another quality opponent. They do not have a lot of wins over five against teams over 500 on the road this season. I will go ahead and lay the five and a half at less than two possessions. This is not an estimation of like where I think the gap is at between the two teams in pursuit of the title, but it is absolutely a representation of where I think the two teams are uh, at this point in the regular season with Boston at home. So I'm going to lay the five and a half of the Celtics. Yeah. I love what you said about not having two bets on the same game when it comes to like side and total yeah. over the years, I have done this on multiple occasions and you're essentially boxing yourself in and you're trying to predict a game perfectly. It's very, very difficult to do. That's a lesson for anybody that's listening. When you start betting, and also why I believe you start to see, especially on the NFL side, why you start to see inflated parlay numbers when you tie up totals and sides, it's because you're essentially trying to predict the game exactly how it's going to play out, and it's very difficult to do. And when you get in a spot where you go down a certain amount of points, you're essentially the ticket's dead because you're on an under and your team can't come back and cover the number because you're on the under as well. So be careful when you think about boxing yourself in when you're playing a total and a side. It can get very hairy very quickly and you just hate yourself because you could have just picked one or the other and then you end up boxing yourself in. Yeah, really good points. I think two things kind of correlated to that. One, I think this is very specifically a regular season thing. In the playoffs, we're playing much more matchups, right? Like we're, we're very focused on playoffs. So I'm more okay. If you're like, look, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna take the under on this game too, because if, if it, like they're not winning, if it's an over game, like there's a lot of those situations, right. right? Or, or they're not winning if it's an under game in the regular season, there's so much more variance, especially from the three point line that you're at risk. If you're playing an under in a game where you, like, that's the thing is I could be absolutely right here on. Yeah, no Boston beat them by six because Boston shot, the lights out versus a porous Nuggets defense. And even though the Celtics defense was able to limit Denver, it also turned them over, which created easy points the other way. And that boosted the pace and the total. So 
there are ways for you to incorporate all these things into, into a same game or to be able to correlate it or just to play the two. And I also understand being like, look, value is value. Like we got two different numbers here. You're showing value on both of them. From my perspective, I'm just like, I don't want the liability on any one game. And I don't want to walk out of this being honestly for how, how many bets I make in the regular season. I don't want to walk out of this being like, I got the five and a half, but I lost the under and I came out minus the juice. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that one alone. 